Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the final instalment of my bookshelf tour. We've got the W's, X's, Y's and Z's today. So, uh, I guess without further ado, let's just get started. So, up first we have Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. Uh, I did read the thing in its entirety, including all of the notes and stuff. i got to be honest, I'm not the biggest Whitman fan. Uh, in fact, my favourite thing about Walt Whitman is that he inspired Allen Ginsberg a lot. But, at least I've read it, you know. Uh, I... I highly, I doubt I'll reread it because it's just not my kind of poetry. Here we have Find Your Thing, How to Discover What You Do Best, Own It and Get Known For It by Lucy Whittington. I believe this is one that I got sent a copy of for review. They don't really need it because for me it's just reading and writing, you know, but um, yeah, I can see how it could help some people and it's a nice little addition to my non-fiction business books collection. Now we're going to move on to Oscar Wilde. So here I have A Florentine Tragedy, which... Uh, this is one of those where, because the text is in the public domain, it's just been put, printed by like a print-on-demand company, and it's just really bad quality. But also, I don't remember it, so I'm going to go go ahead and guess it's not his best-known work, you know. Here I have Intentions. Uh, this is a Fountain Library edition. It's got a signature in here. A.G. Grimwade, Greencock, April 1944. So that's pretty cool. This was actually published closer to Wilde's lifetime than to my lifetime. And, uh, yeah, I just love old books that have got, like, inscriptions and stuff. Here you have a Dover Thrifts editions uh, of Salome, which is, uh, I, I like this little bit here. I'm going to read this, introdu this, like, introductory bit. Outraged by the sexual perversity of this one-act tragedy, Great Britain's Lord Chamberlain banned Salome from the national stage. Symbolist poets and writers, Stefan Malam and Maurice Maeterlinck among them, defended the play's literary brilliance. Beyond its notoriety, the drama's haunting poetic imagery, biblical cadences, and febrile atmosphere have earned it a reputation as a masterpiece of the aesthetic movement of Findusaical England. Can't say that word. Never been able to say that word. Here we have Table Talk, Oscar Wilde, edited by Thomas Wright, and this is just like various stories and conversations, but it's kind of... I guess accounts of some of the witticisms that Wilde was famous for as well. I mean, here we have uh, the illustrated poets of Oscar Wilde. So we've got some of his poetry here, uh, as well as some... Actually, it's not. It's all quotes. Oh, no, there is some... There's some quotes and some poetry. That's my alarm clock. My girlfriend hates it, but it does make sure I wake up. Very cute, though, and definitely a pocket book, you know? We have The Importance of Being Earnest, probably his best play, at least in my opinion. And uh, we're going to follow that straight up with uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray, which is probably his best novel, in my opinion. I'm not going to go too much into either of them, particularly Dorian Gray. I think everyone knows the idea of a painting that uh, kind of ages, whereas while well, the person doesn't. Arguably like an early, early horror novel, I would say. Here we have the Wit of Wisdom, Wit and Wisdom of Oscar Wilde, an exclusive edition for BBC Homes and Antiques magazine, with Stephen Fry as Oscar Wilde on the front of it for some reason. And yeah, it's just again various quotes by him. There seems to be more more of those around than actual original Oscar Wilde works, you know. Here I have Tennessee Williams, a streetcar named Desire. Funnily enough, I almost bought this in a charity shop the other day because I thought I didn't have it. So apparently I do. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I read it though, so I think it was around school time. And actually, funny enough, it wasn't required reading for school. I was just, I just picked it up. Uh, that isn't the copy that I did have though. Here we have More Poetic Views of Life by Laurie Wilkinson. This is another author who sent me a book for an honest review. And I gave this, I think, a two-star review with my honest feedback on it. And then he used this persona. The second author as well, might I add to do this, used this uh, fake persona to uh, not only give himself five star reviews, but to then leave one star reviews on my books, like in retaliation without actually reading my books. And uh, yeah, it, I'm gonna read you some of his poems so you can see how terrible it is as well. All wrapped up. I can't open up the wrapper no matter how hard I try. Like undoing a peanut packet, a big tug and out they fly. Pull here, the packet glibly says, so there you pull but have no joy. And the pouch stays firmly shut as you pull and tug it like a toy. Biscuits tightly wrapped are fun when the opening tag won't work, and the biscuits are now crumbs as the packet you pull and jerk. The cereal box stays open here so you dutifully aim to comply. But hard luck, it's open other end, so you just scream and cry. 
Whatever type of wrapper cover is between you and your wares, it will set up a conundrum test sure to give you bad nightmares. If your goods don't have a tag pull, they'll be mummified all in tape that will hurt and break your nails, leaving you with a puzzled gape. So best be prepared for opening war and armed yourself with all the tools. Scissors, hammer, knife and bombs for this package fight has no rules. Next up we have some graphic novels. This is Dust Ship Glory and Look Straight Ahead, both by Elaine M. Will. Dust Ship Glory is actually based on a novel uh, and it talks about a guy called uh, Tom Sukanan, who's a Finnish immigrant in Saskatchewan. And then Look Straight Ahead is very much a mental health related book. Um, I've met her a few times and she's just a very talented artist and storyteller. So yeah, check those out. Actually, I think I did a review of Dust Ship Glory, which I can link to below. Next up, we have Filthy Creatures by David Williams. So I was actually invited to the launch of this. So he's, he's written Best Dane at socialbookshelves.com. And they did actually have like animals there that you could like talk to. Well, you know, there'd be a snake you could, could get photos with and stuff. Uh, and this is again, very similar to that style of poetry really. Moose. The only moose I've seen, said Madeline in her frocklet, are piled high with coloured sprinkles and covered in chocolate. I've seen one, said Izzy, inevitably looking busy. I was having some friends for tea. Did they taste good? interrupted Madeline. No, like mayonnaise, I'll have to start again. I was having some friends around for tea, Daisy, Clementine, Emily and me. Then there's a moral at the end of each of them, so this one is forget the elephant, try a moose in the room. I don't know, it's not really my kind of poetry again, but he seemed like a nice guy when I met him, so there's that. All right, here we have William Carlos Williams, Collected Poems Volume 1, Collected Poems Volume 2. These are big old chunky books, but um, I'm a bit of a WCW fan, so uh, so yeah, I, I checked them out and I enjoyed it. Here we have Watch Your Story, the postcard, po uh, the postcard collection. Exclusive very short stories from authors, booksellers and customers. So we have one here, one, this one here is uh, J.K. Rowling, I think. Uh, wasn't it? Yeah, who we got on the back. So some of the names include J.K. Rowling, Doris Lessing, Nick Hornby, Sebastian Folks, Irvin Welsh, Neil Gaiman, Margaret Atwood. Uh, yeah, and they're all like in the form of these postcards. You can actually pull them out and send them as well. But um, like they're all handmade by the authors and whatnot on postcards. So for example, I think this. Yeah, this is the J.K. Rowling one, and you can see her tiny handwriting. And yeah, it's just quite a cool little thing. It was only published. It was. Five pound when it was published by Waterstones with all proceeds to charity. I don't know if you can even still get it anymore, but uh, yeah, I, I just knew I needed it for my collection. Here we have Dan Wilson, make serious money on eBay, UK, Amazon, and beyond. Uh, I basically picked this up because I was selling stuff on eBay and trying to make a bit of money. You know, I'm actually doing the same now. Maybe I should give it a reread. I do remember for for what it was, it was pretty good. Whether it's still relevant now, I suppose it probably is because it talks about things like tools that upload m multiple listings at a time and stuff that so just make it all a lot more efficient. Here we have, uh, what's his name? Ryder Windham, the Bartok Assassins and Jedi Emergency. These are just two little uh, like Star Wars books. Even says on the back, this edition is only available for distribution through the school market. And I didn't get these from school. I don't know. I don't actually know where I got them from. But uh, yeah, short little reads. I would say they're like the middle grade equivalent of for Star Wars, you know? Here we have Johan De Witt, Jero Nemo. Uh, this is another like really long, dense prose poetry project. Uh, but I was one of the Reality Street supporters, so my name is in at the back. I probably wouldn't recommend this, to be honest, but I'm glad that by supporting that press, I managed to help support some poets. So that's pretty cool. Here we have The Vulnerable Gods by Todd Wittenmeyer, a.k.a. Todd the Librarian here on BookTube. Up next we have P.G. Woodhouse, thank you Jeeves. This is the only Jeeves book that I've read so far. And unfortunately it was kind of racist. I mean, a big part of the plot involved a white dude blacking up and pretending to be a, a Negro minstrel. So it made me kind of uncomfortable to read it, to be honest. So I don't know if I'm going to read any more Woodhouse. I don't know. Even if you overlook that, it was just okay for me. So I have no like pressing need to get to more. Here we have Bob's and Virgin by Cam Seawolf. I've also reviewed this one. So again, I'll link below. And this is basically like found poetry from people's creepy Instagram comments like this. This is by Gimme Them Toes. I want to smell her soft, smooth feet after her two hour vigorous Zumba workout. 
Run, jog or hike in Ugg boots, with no socks on a hot 100 degree summer day. When I slide them boots off, I hope them feet are really hot, steamy, musty, rank, rancid, sour, stinking, sweaty. And I'll rub her slimy, icky, sticky, gooey, moist, buttery, cheesy, creamy, clammy, toe jammy, gravy, foot sweat all on my face while I smell her funky, corn, chippy, smelly feet and suck her delicious toes. And that is Cam from Wolf Shop Publishing here on Booktube, so if you were triggered by that, take it up with Cam, I guess. Here we have The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer, and uh, I was sent a copy of this, I don't know, I think it had just come out, it was, actually that was it, it was via the Waterstones Book Club, and myself and two other bloggers, one of whom is called Penny, uh, who, Penny Fordham, who I'm still quite good friends with, we did a Google Hangout, I can, I'll link to that below as well, why not, because that was through my old book blogs YouTube channel, from like September 2013 or something. But yeah, it was an interesting book and I want to read more of uh, Meg Wallitzer at some point. Here we have Dave Wolverton, The Rising Force. This is another one of these old scholastic Star Wars books. Not bad for what it is. Of course, none of these are canon anymore since Disney bought the franchise, but hey, hey. Here we have Mrs. Dalloway, Virginia Woolf. I studied this at university and it was the only book for my, it was for my London and Literature module. It was the only book for it that I didn't manage to finish. Uh, I, I think it's the only time I've ever used an audiobook to finish the book as well. And I actually then reread it via audiobook last year. And it went from being my most hated book of all time to... It was alright. I probably gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. But I do want to read more Virginia Woolf. And she's obviously very influential because she kind of is responsible for the popularity of like stream of consciousness style writing. Here we have Wordsworth, the, alter the Eternal Romantic. This is just a collection of Wordsworth poetry. Gotta be honest, I'm not a massive Wordsworth fan, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I was part of my collection. Probably one day I will actually read his completed works, maybe in my retirement. Here we have The Library of Trinity College Dublin by Harry Corey Wright, and basically this is a lot of beautiful shots of Trinity College in Dublin and the library there. Some close-ups and then some like, you know, more expansive ones of the library. And also there are some like essays and stuff. Or a brief introductory essay, rather, that gives you some more context on the project as well. But yeah, this was one somebody offered to send to me, and I was like, yeah, oh, I'll have that. So here's John Wyndham, The Day of the Triffids. I actually read this one quite recently, and it's, uh, I think it's described as like ecological horror almost. It's uh, very like survivalist. What I think was really interesting in this was how much there was in there about suicide, which I think was very realistic, because basically everyone got blinded. And then there, there are suddenly these man-eating plants around and a lot of people just lost hope. And I thought that was really well done, especially for a book written at this time. I actually have The Crack and Wakes by John Wyndham on my TBR to get to soon as well. But um, yeah, I definitely recommend this, especially if you like anything like zombie films or stuff like that. Because the influence of this can be felt everywhere in like even like 28 Days Later and stuff like that. Alrighty. Next up we have Charles Young, An Introduction to Coping with Panic. Uh, this is just a very cheap, short thing. I think I was even given this by my GP. But you can buy it online as well. It's got some, like, cognitive behavioural therapy stuff and just some tips for dealing with anxiety, you know? Uh, and so I picked that up when I was when I was first diagnosed. Uh, then we have Ch David Young. So we have A Dark Estate, Stassi Child, and Stassi Wolf. These all take place in East Berlin. In the 1970s, and they follow uh, Uber Lieutenant uh, Karen Muller. And actually, they were really good, particularly the first one. I really liked the first one because it basically, uh, I think, a body was found in the like no man's land between East and West Germany. And this detective's investigating that, but at the same time, there are people who don't really want to give her, you know, full cooperation and stuff. So it also got political, which I thought was cool. We have Silkover Razor Blades by Ileandra Young. Uh, I believe she, she maybe maybe sent this to me, or uh, I don't know. I, I talked to her back in the day. Anyway, there's a little note here. Hi Dane, please find here a proof copy of Silkover Razor Blades for review. Uh, so yeah, I don't particularly remember. I, well, I do remember reading it, and I remember it not being awful. That's it. Yeah, there's like a I don't know what you'd call it, like a convergence of two characters over two thousand years, and they the the person in our modern day starts to become this. This dead person from like ancient Egypt, basically. Here we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Uh, I really didn't like this book. Uh, I gave it like a 2 out of 5, I think. I did a full review of it, which I'll link to below, which is probably one of my most disliked videos. But hey-ho. 
Just my opinion, you don't have to agree with it. Um, here we have my Benjamin Zephaniah collection. So Zephaniah is an interesting one because I don't particularly highly rate him, but I have a lot of respect for the man. He was actually, he used to be a criminal, I believe, like a petty criminal. Uh, and he was illiterate as well. And he, I think he spent some time in jail. And then he kind of turned his life around and realized he wanted to spread like a message of hope and inspiration for kids. So that's kind of what he did. So uh, here we have Face. So this is about a guy who's in a gang and they're in a stolen car and then I believe there's a car crash and then he gets like facial disfigurement and it investigates that and how he deals with that and other, other people's reactions. Here we have J is for Jamaica by Benjamin Zephaniah and Prodeepta Das and this is literally just uh, you know a book to help people learn to spell it, uh, to count the, do the alphabet. T is for tamarind, they make sweets and drinks and sauces. Some large meals have got tamarind somewhere in all the courses. Grown high on the majestic tree with hot earth underneath. The shell is hard, the pulp is soft, the seeds can break your teeth. So it does an alphabet, but like with stuff that's, you know, culturally relevant to Jamaica. Here we have Kung Fu Trip. This is just about, uh, he was into, here, there's a photo of him. He kind of got into Kung Fu and I believe Kung Fu Trip is like non-fiction about him. I think he travelled to, you know, try and learn a bit more. We have Proper Propaganda. Uh, this is poetry. City lights. Screaming children, battered children. Citizen's advice outside is a Rolls Royce with people who look nice down in my city. Newspaper lies, government spies, another purse robbed, a woman sits and sobs. It happens without pity down in my city. Bored teenagers beating strangers in some dark alley. They tried it once with me down in my city says here, this is one of the first poems I ever wrote down. It was also the inspiration behind the title of my last Blood Axe book, City Psalms, but then silly me forgot to include it in the collection. Here we have Talking Turkeys, uh, and so this is again more poetry. This A lot of this is in uh, like Jamaican Patois dialect. There's a sonnet under me bonnet. There's an epic in me ear. There's a novel in me navel. There's a classic here somewhere. Yeah, I think that's quite cool. Here you have Terror Kid, so I think this is about a kid who gets wrongly accused of being terrorism, a terrorist. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I read it, but I do remember this being one of his better novels. And then we have Too Black, Too Strong, which is another book of poems. Uh, these ones are quite, quite long ones, actually, for him. Let's go for time. All the time of the offence I was at home, the day in question, no street did I roam. The alleged offence was nothing of my doing. Can innocence be something that needs proving? I was minding my own business and quite straight when the wicked one arrested me with hate. In a cell they gave me water and said cheers. They gave me judge and judge gave me two years. So yeah, as you can see, he kind of represents, you know, the lifestyle he was from, you know? Here we have Web Marketing for Dummies by Jan Zimmerman, another non-fiction social media marketing book. Not much to say there, really. And then we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. And uh, blasphemy here, but I preferred the movie. I didn't like the point of view of death. It just felt like a gimmick for me, unfortunately. I will link to my review of this below so you can find out more. Um, but that's why I think I liked the movie, because it felt a bit less overdone like that. Although still, I just, I don't know. It didn't need all that stuff. But anyway. So there we have it, this is the end of an era, because Marcus Zusak at ZU is the last of the authors in my collection alphabetically. So that is the bookshelf tour officially finished. I will also, this is all going to be in a playlist, again I'll link to the playlist below, which will have all of my bookshelf tours in order, including my R.L. Stein and Terry Pratchett collections, which I did as separate videos. And also I'm going to put all of my box set wrap ups in here, just to make sure they're included. Uh, and yeah. That's it. Now, if you guys have watched to this point, if you want me to do like a video showing you the scope of my overall collection or like a tour of my TBR or something like that, let me know. But in the meantime, that is it. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.